Hey, this is Zach with Use What You Got. Today in our basement, we are gonna be redoing this entire entertainment area. As you can see, there is just a bunch of random things. So we're gonna take this whole area and give it a nice modern flip. So hang on tight, we're gonna get started. This little setup here to the left is Martina's sewing station where she puts a lot of things that she's worked on in the past or she is currently working on. And the goal is to get rid of all these things out of plain sight and have this all looking a lot more sleek and modern. Underneath of it, there's just a ton of DVDs and Blu-rays, some video games, some weightlifting equipment, and my computer in the corner. Again, the goal is to just get rid of all this stuff. So in prep for the new cabinets, we're gonna pull all this stuff out. And I'm really excited because once we put the new cabinets in, I'm gonna make a custom tabletop, which I'm really excited to tackle. Before I do that, let's get to the cabinets. All right, so if you've ever done Ikea cabinets before, you're probably familiar with these, even though they actually had mitered corners, which was kind of nice. A slight upgrade to what I've seen in the past, but still very simple to put together. Check out the feet. It actually came with a little template piece so you could mark exactly where the feet needed to go. Once you had it marked, you put it in place and then you just screw it down. So I did this four times for each cabinet and it took a little while, but it actually wasn't very hard. Having that little template piece actually was really helpful. So one of the first things I did after I made the first cabinet was clean up the area. It was pretty messy. I have to say, this is only the first cabinet and in total, I easily spent about three to four hours making sure this was as level and plumb and straight as possible. And let me tell you, it was kind of annoying. Inside the feet, there are pieces that you can unscrew to make it either taller or shorter. And balancing all four was very difficult. The combination of all these things, it just took forever. But I finally got it four cabinets later and it's looking pretty good. All right, so let's get into the part that I was looking forward to the most. Here I am gluing up the tabletop. This is actually very simple, something I've been thinking about doing for quite a while now, and I kind of made a mistake. I only put together three boards, and I wasn't counting because each board was six inches, but technically it's not. It's less than six inches. That's just what it says online. So I ended up going back to Home Depot later, buying a fourth board and gluing that together with the other three boards. It was a little bit of a process, but I tried to get it as flat as possible. It's not as flat as I wanted it to be, but with a bit of sanding, I got it pretty smooth. So to prep for a perfect cut on the tabletop, I'm using a washer, I'm using scissors, and a bunch of cardboard. I cut the cardboard down into individual pieces and I found any edge that was straight and I put that against the edge of the cabinet itself. By doing this, I'm essentially creating a template of the outside perimeter of the cabinet. And once I get each of these pieces in place, I can scribe a line, cut it, and then it fits perfectly against the wall. I'm able to create a perfect match for the top of the table. And then what I'll end up doing is I'll take all of this, I'll put it on the top of the piece of the wood, I'll outline it, and then I'll cut it. I also taped the edges to make sure that they were in the exact location they needed to be. The cut wasn't gonna be off. Once I had everything perfectly where it needed to be, then I could actually use the hot glue to hold everything in place. By using hot glue, it actually ends up being very strong. So I wasn't worried at all about the pieces of cardboard separating. If you're interested at all in seeing more behind the scenes, I have put a ton of this project up on my Instagram page. So go check it out if you're interested. And here's a quick look at what it ended up looking like once everything was glued into place. Now that the glue on the tabletop was dry, I could take the cardboard out to the garage and lay it down in place. Once I had it in place, I put it down more tape just to make sure the cardboard did not move around. And then I was ready to start making the outline. Essentially just took my time and I worked my way around the cardboard and made sure that I really got a good marking in all the way around. When I got to the pieces of tape, what I would do is just move it out of the way for a moment and then put it back. I also used my right hand to hold down the cardboard just in case the pen moved it. And then I can remove it. As you can see, I'm using the straight edge to run my saw across. I really could only do this on the left and right side because the length of the table 
technically uncut was 10 feet, um, but once I cut it, it came down to about nine and a half feet. I did use the straight edge a little bit on the front of the table, just because it wasn't perfectly straight. I ended up doing it more a, a slightly freehand and I brought in the jigsaw just to cut some of the pieces off so I could start fresh. But on the back side, it was even more crazy because you know, I, I marked against the wall and the wall is definitely not straight in my house or most houses. But again, at the end, it all worked out and I tried to get as close as I could to the lines and then I just sanded it down from there. Done! Done! I mean, for this first part, did it! I don't know if you've noticed up to this point, but you can see the wall kind of goes in a little bit right underneath the TV. So for some reason they put trim up the wall right here. So I ended up using my multi-tool to cut just a piece off the, the thickness of the wood that I was putting on the top of the cabinets. The cabinets actually stick off the wall a little bit. So I was able to use a cutoff of the piece of wood just to make sure that I had the right height. Once I was done with that, I could take the piece off. There we go. And it fit pretty good. Nice. Look at that girls. Perfect. And my little helper usually is pretty close yep. by. That's what I needed. Right underneath there, like that, and like that. All right, time for the test fit. <laughs> and this was my first test fit. It wasn't perfect, but it was really, really close. As you can see in a second, I was pretty happy with the fit because I really didn't know how it was going to turn out. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Now it's time to stand in the place where you live. And as usual, because there was some high spots, I really, really took my time and sanded this down. I actually went from 60 grit all the way up to 400. I'm not saying you have to do this, but I really wanted to try to get this as smooth as possible. I probably only needed to go to like 220, but I had um, up to 400 and I figured I wanted to try using it. So I really took my time and tried my best to get this as flat as possible. Of course, for stain, I chose golden oak, some classic Verathane uh, stain. And if you've never put stain on wood before, it's pretty simple. Just read the instructions. <laughs> but all you do is pretty much wipe it on, let it sit for a second, and then you wipe it off. I would say that the stain was a little bit more brown than we wanted, but it's all right. The stain gives it some character, and that's pretty much all that mattered to us. Um, I asked my wife at first, she was like, oh, do whatever you want, I don't really care. And then when I showed her the table before I put the stain on, then she said, oh, that's too pale. So the stain helped a lot, and as long as she's happy with it, we're good. So before we get to end, let me remind you what it looked like before I started, just to refresh your memory. There was just a ton of stuff. Everything was out. Some of the stuff we didn't even know where to put. Some of the stuff shouldn't have been there. And now we're actually able to hide this and actually kind of declutter a bit, which makes me personally very happy. And here's the after. I'm really happy to be done with this project. This is probably one of the most challenging I've done so far. We are very happy with the way it looks. And I guess at the end, when you're doing a project for your house, that's all that matters because it's your house. But we're able to get a ton of stuff in these cabinets, including games. Most of what Martina had for sewing and for crocheting and whatnot. We have a whole area for our kids' DVDs and for some exercise equipment. And then of course, our DVDs and some video game stuff. Uh, personally, I think it looks way better, a bit more modern, very simple. I love the way it came out. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to use what you got, and I will catch you in the next one.